latest episode of The Lisa Pizik Show. This is going to be a good one today because we are digging into mindset. Mindset. Your mind that guides you in those actions and the way you think and what you believe and what goodness not only are you putting out into the world, but you're bringing in your inputs every single day. We are still filming in this time where hopefully we're on the tail end of this pandemic. But if you've been watching the news on social media, talking to your neighbors or your friends or your family, you're probably like us and you can tell that the mindset of people is so broad. You can talk to one person, to the next person, to the next person, and they all have different mindsets. So today, I'm not going to be talking about mindset by myself. I'm so excited to have my friend Tara Punter, all the way from the UK. God, I love podcasts and online world. All the way from the UK, here to chat with me. So before I let you know who she is and what she does, let's welcome her, Tara. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's such a privilege to be on your podcast. Oh my gosh. So Tara reached out, or her assistant reached out and said, you know, hey, Tara would love to come on your podcast. And I know again in the podcast world, sometimes people are hesitant to bring people on that they quote unquote don't know. I'm kind of the opposite. If you are a heart-centered entrepreneur that puts out goodness into the world, why not spread your message. And instantly, when I got on the call with Tara to find out all about her, I knew that our mindsets were a lot alike and that this was going to be amazing because she's got such goodness to share with you. And we were chatting before we hopped on and Tara was sharing that she had her biggest month in her business in terms of income and impact just this past month. And I was sharing the same exact thing. And I know that money isn't always the driver of everything, but as Brenda Burchard, a previous mentor of mine said, if you don't make the money, you can't support the message. So money is important, but it just shows that that mindset of, oh, we're in a global pandemic and business isn't happening and all of that, we're gonna question that in our time together. So let me tell you all about Tara. So Tara is a mindset and marketing expert for equestrian and country brand. She's a country girl and we'll talk about that too. And she is a qualified mindset NLP and hypnotherapy coach. She has years of experience in the equine industry and a passion for all things country. Tara along with her team have years of experience helping businesses with their PR marketing, and social media. She knows firsthand what it takes to create a successful six-figure business, and she has a passion for self, self-development and an inspirational story. So let's dig into that first, this inspirational story, and don't know if that relates to the equestrian country girl kind of stuff, but tell us a bit about like, how did you get started in that? And what is your story of how you got into doing this kind of work? Okay, so I, it was about five years ago. I was very unhappy in my job, like so unhappy. I was going in every day, hating my job, hating my life, driving home from work in tears. And I just remember thinking, oh my goodness, like there must be more for me. And I reached out to a guy who was setting up um, an equestrian website. And I basically said to him, um, if ever you need anyone to write a blog or to help with any social media, just let me know. I've been, you know, I've had horses my whole life um, and I'd be delighted to help out. Around the same time where I worked, tried to change my contract and they tried to make me start hours earlier, work longer days, work every weekend for no more money. And I thought, hmm, I don't like the sound of this. Like no. you'd have to give me an epic pay rise <laughs> for me to accept these terms. And I said to them, you know, and what if I don't want to take it? And they said, you can leave. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is my chance. This is my chance to flee. Now, at the time I had not a penny of savings, not one single penny in my savings account. And I had 200 pounds in my bank. And I thought, I have got to make this work. 
So I went back to the guy that was setting up the lifestyle website, the equestrian website, yeah. and I said, I'm now unemployed. So I'm serious if you want me to write something. And then three days later, I had um, press accreditation and I was working as a journalist at one of the world's biggest horse events. And I just remember thinking, this is it. Like, this is my opportunity to like break free, create the life that I desire and deserve and to actually do something that I love and that lights me up. And yeah, it's my five year anniversary on the 23rd of June. So just, I'm so humbled and excited by it. And I still sort of love every single day in my business. Yeah. I went from being a journalist and I then had lots of business owners asking me how they can be better on social media, how they can feature in magazines, how they can connect with their clients and get more sales. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I could do PR. So I sort of gradually and quite organically transitioned from being a journalist into the PR. Um, that was October 2016. I then started coaching people. So I was actually telling them how to do their own PR, how to do their own social media. And that all just completely grew. Um, and then I've been sort of doing proper sort of coaching programs, as it were, since October 2018. And that was the time that I started working on my mindset. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to stop you for a second because there was so much goodness just in that story. A few things that I loved was you gave first before you ever asked for anything in return. So you went to this gentleman and said, hey, I would love to just write blogs. I would love to just show up for you and help you however you see fit. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times in business, again, we're talking mindset, we always think, what's going to be my return on investment? And what am I going to get out of this? And who am I going to meet? And how is this going to benefit me? And we don't always think about how to give first before we ever take. So I love that. And secondly, holy moly, like that could have been a downward spiral of you going, oh my God, I have to quit. Like I have, you know, minimal money in my bank account. Talk about, you know, road A or road B when that situation happened. And you can probably look back even more on it now and go, that happened for you, for sure. Like that happened for a reason. So you could take that opportunity and go, nope, this is my, I love how you said, this is my chance to flee. I love that. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> oh a lot God. of people would be like, I have no money. I have to stay in this job. You know, all the have tos. I have to make this work. I have to now work on the weekend. I have to work. I can't ask for any more money. You know, we get stuck in these have tos. Yeah. So what would be the first thing you would tell someone when they are like just hate crying and just 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 at their wits end of a situation and they desperately want to make that change? What's one thing they could think or do or how can they start that spark to make a difference in their life? So I think one of my all time favorite mottos, quotes, you know, the thing that I absolutely live by is if you don't ask, you don't get Mm. And I know where I am now because I reached out to that guy and I said to him, can I write something for you? And again, I was just wanting to like get my foot in the door there. Had I not asked, I don't know where I'd be right now. I really don't because I was so unhappy and you just, you have nothing to lose from asking. What's the worst that can happen? Somebody will say no to you. A no is still a win because you have an answer. Actually, that person then might be able to connect you with somebody else. Mm. They might say, I can't offer you this, but can you do this? Or actually, I'm not in a position to offer you that, but somebody else is. Yeah. Honestly, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. And I think also so many people, they get really stuck on the how-tos and, oh, well, I don't know what to do. And I also think it's really important that you follow your path. Like, I never thought I would end up where I am now, but I just followed the path. I let the universe take me where it wanted to take me. I started listening to what clients were asking, what people were messaging me wanting. And then I've created things around that. I've created my packages and my programs specifically around that. Mm. And I think also people need to realize that there is so much more for them. If they really are unhappy, there is so much more out there. Mm -hmm. that you don't even recognize yet. Mm -hmm. I love that you said no is still a win. 
Mm -hmm. How many times do we let no's derail us from taking that next step? Like we give up too early, I think a lot of times in this industry, in this world, there are bumps and, and not even roadblocks, just stepping stones to make you go, okay, that didn't work. Now I'm going to try this or that person can't help me, but maybe I'll ask and there's someone else that can help me. So I love the way you just reframed that no, because for a lot of people, no is a done deal. And you're like, no, no is a starting point. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. No is a pivot. No is a shift. And I also love that one thing you shared in your story was about the PR and all of that. You did it for yourself first and you kind of got your systems and strategies and processes in place. And then other people started saying, Hey, how can I do that? So I love that you were willing. And that's basically how I grew my entire business as well. People are like, how did you know how to do a podcast? Or I'm like, uh, I asked for help and then I just went and mucked my way through it. Like yeah. that's everything, right? Like how did you know how to do social media? And uh, I just started doing it and I figured it out and then I was able to teach others. So I think that is a myth that, or maybe you can talk a bit about that, that you have to be perfect. You have to know everything. You have to have it all figured out before you can actually like go and do or go and teach massive myth yeah. so when i started when i went to that first event as a journalist i had never written an article before i hadn't <laughs> worked as a journalist before my job before was a manager so it's completely un you know unrelated mm -hmm. um i thought right i believe in myself enough i know enough about what i'm writing about which is really important and i believed in myself and I think that is so important. And, you know, when I then transitioned into PR, I'd only done it, you know, for a couple of people, I was doing it for the website company that I was working for. I didn't have loads of experience, but again, I was learning on the job. I was working with coaches to try and help me know more. You know, you never know everything. And now I'm forever investing. I think I've got three coaches at the moment. I'm forever investing to get to the next point. Mm -hmm. Likewise, with my podcast, when I launched it, I didn't know what I was doing, but I reached out, I sought help. And I'm like, if I make a mistake, I can learn from it. It's not the end of the world. It really doesn't matter. As long as I can learn from it and take a positive from it, to me, yes. that's really a win. Yeah. And it's amazing how people will come to help you sometimes, even without you asking when you put out your intentions or what you want in the world. Cause that, that's what happened for me with the podcast. I was investing similar to you. I was in a group coaching program and there was a fellow participant who was stuck a little bit on languaging and content is like my jam. So I was helping her that way. Little did I know her secret sauce was podcasts, getting them up, getting them started. And she literally said to me, have you ever thought about having a podcast? And I'm like, actually, I really want to have a podcast. I just don't know how to do it. And she's like, I'll do it with you. Let's let, do you want to get on now and do it? And I'm like, well, uh, uh, oh, oh, okay. And like two hours later, my podcast was born. Oh my and goodness. That's totally like how it went. And when you again, give and put out goodness, but then share kind of what you want to do. Again, the universe, as you said, is working for you. It will bring people into mm -hmm. your life when you get out of your way and start telling people what you want and what you need and what you're trying to build. And now, especially with social media, we're so connected with people, right? More yeah. Than ever. I want to go back to, you said, I believed in myself enough. How did you, you know, cause for some people, I think we can say that. And for other people, they probably can't say that. And what was the piece that got you to that point, that confidence and that knowing of, I believe in myself? It's a really good question. I think so many people struggle with their self-belief. They really, really do. Um, I'm very fortunate that my mum, when I was growing up, was always telling me I can do anything I put my mind to, mm. anything. And, you know, when you're younger and you don't really listen, you think you're just saying that because you're my mum. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> right. um, 
but I think subconsciously that must have really instilled confidence and self-belief in me because you know I've always felt confident and always felt like I can go for something and you know various jobs I've had I haven't had the experience and I'm just like I will get through this like I will do what I have to do to get through it um so I was very lucky to already have that sort of self-belief within me um Mm -hmm. but I know you know the mindset helps so much with that and you know to to people that are really struggling with their mindset self-belief confidence you know there are some little things you can do and start like absorbing all of these amazing podcasts and content from people like yourself that all these little things lots of small steps that really help with those big shifts and big changes yeah and i find people are really no matter what industry you're in are understanding that mindset and belief is such a key pillar every mastermind i've ever been in any mentor i've ever hired even i'm sure you're the same as me anyone we coach or work with self-belief and mindset work is in everything no matter whether you're a brand spanking newbie you're at the five figures the six figures the seven figures if we want to use income as a you know progression it's no matter where you're at scaling in your business new challenges come up and and self-belief always has to be built no matter where you're at in your business yeah. right every time you get to a new level or you want to push through a new income barrier or a new goal these little subconscious hacks come up don't they and they're like are you sure are you worthy and you're like yes pipe down i've got uh-huh. this under control uh-huh. and they're all uh-huh. raising their head aren't they yeah or or i find the challenges come and then it's like how bad do you really want this like are you yeah. willing to navigate around that roadblock are you willing to hear no 10 times before that one beautiful yes you've been dreaming about finally comes yeah. uh, there's that bit of resilience i think that comes with that self belief i love that so we talked a bit about social media i shared how you know you can find anyone or reach out to anything but there is a little bit of a negative to social media especially now with just the state of the world and so many divided beliefs and how easily we can share and speak our voice. And do you think social media, like, what do you think about social media and mindset? Like stay on it, stay off it, have goals. Cause I've been hearing a lot of people saying I need a social media detox. Like it's not good for my mental health or it's not good for my mindset. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, that is such a hot topic at the moment, isn't it? I personally, I love social media um, because I get the majority of my work from it. I'd say at least 97% of my work comes through social media Mm. and that's completely organic. Um, So it has such an important place and it enables me to hopefully motivate and inspire and share more mindset hacks and give as much value as I can to the world. But there is also the flip side. And, you know, I think Facebook is probably the one for this where people are very negative on it. And I I just think, you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Absolutely. But I think some people use social media platforms the wrong way and they use them to try and put their thoughts and views on other people um, and really try to make them believe something that they might not believe before. Um, I actually don't scroll social media myself. Mm-hmm. I show up on it for my clients and you know I show up on it myself I look at my clients content if I was you know before we spoke I was checking out your content I look at my coaches content to get motivation and inspiration from them I don't scroll Facebook I just don't I very occasionally scroll Instagram for like five minutes but I just find if I scroll on Facebook for five or ten minutes even with my mindset that I've got it can just make you feel like, oh my gosh, the world's going to end. Everywhere's in such a bad place. It's so negative. Yeah. And I just can't cope with that. Yeah, I'm the exact same. I, I definitely learned early on I'm an empath. So I yeah. really feel people and I feel emotions. And I'm ex- the exact same as you. I go on for a purpose. I know exactly why I'm on social media as a business tool. Or if I'm going on to share pictures of my family or connect with a family member, like there's always a purpose 
to why I'm on there, what I'm trying to achieve and when I'm getting off. Yeah. Because the same, if I just scroll, I find with my mindset and you're probably the same, I'm pretty light in this world. Like I flow pretty easily. I have energy. I feel good. And then I find if I scroll or I see something, I instantly feel heavy. Like I just feel like I take on the weight of everyone's pain and frustration. And I'm the same as you. I think social media can be an amazing tool when you've got a reason for going on there and you stay focused on, you know, it can make you lighter when you stay focused on why you're there. It can make you heavy when you get stuck in the scroll and the craziness um, of the world. I think um, a lot of people wake up first thing in the morning, they do is they check their social media. Was it Brendan said that you're less productive if you check your social media in the morning? And I just think, you know, in that first hour of the day, your mind is like a sponge. And what are you filling it up with? Are you filling it up with fear, scarcity, lack, worry, a global pandemic? Or are you actually using that time to like prime yourself and feed yourself with gratitude and positivity and meditate? Do those things that is setting you up for the day ahead. And that practice alone changed my life. It really did. Same. I call it like the bookends of the day. Because you're yeah. right, you start that day in reactivity, because it's very reactive when you read, you can't help but react somehow, right? When you start that day in reactivity, and then same thing, how many people are just like scrolling before bed? And that is what you wake up to again, like what you went to bed with is what you wake up with. So that was huge in my life too, thinking about those bookends of the day. And same with email, Brendan said, yeah. Email is just a convenient um, organizer of other people's demands. And I was yeah. like, <laughs> so the same, like in the first, you know, hour of the day, I don't check social media. I don't scroll the feed. I don't check email. I'm the same okay. as I'm journaling, I'm meditating, I'm writing, I'm exercising, I'm moving, I'm having a cup of coffee with my husband, I'm connecting with our son. You know, like I get, I used to say I get a late start to the day, but I'm like, it's not actually a late start. It's a very intentional first hour of my day, whether some days that's 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., some days that's 8 a.m. It doesn't matter sometimes what goes on. It's just that first hour I know is mine. Yes, I agree completely. I love that you brought that up because again, so many people don't think they have a choice. They let the technology run them instead of again choices yeah it's all about choices oh my god i love that so much so do your clients do they ask you like the mindset work that you do with clients do they come in knowing that like oh i got this you know roadblock or this thing's holding me back or do you find that you uncover things that maybe people didn't realize are tripping them up in their life yeah, a lot of the time they don't recognize that it's a mindset block. And they just say, you know, I'm showing up on social media, just not getting sales, I'm posting every day on Instagram, doing stories, you know, I'm just not getting sales. And then I dig a bit deeper and dig a bit deeper and dig a bit deep, deeper. I send them a questionnaire before we start working together. And then I speak to them again and dig a bit deeper and dig a bit deeper. And generally something comes up and it's just that aha moment. And I say, that is what's holding you back. It's that one thing alone. It's lots of work we can do to resolve it, such as tapping, hypnotherapy, like so many mindset techniques and NLP techniques. But it's just trying to get that recognition. And then I'm like, now we're going to have success. Mm-hmm. I think also a lot of people say, you know, I don't need the mindset work. I just need some help with my marketing. And I'm like, okay, we'll see about that. And, go, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, right, we're going to do some mindset work now. Yes. <laughs> Most of the time, all of my packages start with the mindset work because it's so important and it is the core of everything. Mm-hmm. So we always start with that. But there are always some people that are a bit resistant to it. But I always get them in the end. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was a nurse before. Uh, that's my degree is actually in nursing. And that's what I did. I was an ICU nurse. And I did all this nursing work before I got into, you know, entrepreneurial world. And I used to teach nurses about like wound care and dressing, you know, wounds and sores and things and open areas and surgical wounds. And whenever I would teach them, they would always be like, just tell me what to put on the wound. Like, just tell me the treatment plan. Just tell me the how to. And I'm like, 
wrong question. Like if you don't know what you're looking at, if you don't know what you're working with, it's not the how to, you're never going to be able to fix it. If you don't know that awareness of what you're dealing with. And I think, you know, in the business world, the same thing. It's like, what content should I post? Or, you know, what language should I use? Or what should I offer this week? Or should I do a Facebook ad? Or what should I say in my speeches? And it's like, we got to do this inner work first yep. to make sure you're coming from an aligned place so that all of that can flow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So true. So, so true. And do you... I love how you said the tapping. I remember when I read the money mindset, uh, Jen Sincaro wrote the, you are a badass. And then she wrote the, you are a badass at making money. I love that book. I those books like, what was it, maybe five years ago? Like when I first started digging into my own blocks and things. And I remember she was like giving us all these mantras to say. And one was like, I'm a badass money making machine. Yep. And I was like, God, that feels so weird for me to say that. But then I was like, I'm going to say it every day. Like, I'm a badass money-making machine. And, you know, you're talking about the tapping and the, do you find that, like, people have to be willing to let go of that judgment to go, oh, well, I know that could help me, but what if I do it wrong? Or I'm going to look so stupid or I'm going to sound so stupid. Like, yeah. I find that sometimes that resistance comes up. Because again, we have a defined way that we think we're supposed to be when we work on ourselves. Like, do people give you resistance when you're like, okay, we're going to do some tapping? Or how does that work? Yes, for sure. Um, I think a lot of the time they can't understand how it works. So I do affirmations every single day. I talk to myself as I'm going around my day, when I'm walking my dog, like I'm ever saying affirmations to myself. And I know how well they work. But when somebody is starting affirmations for the first time, they find it really hard to connect with it. And I sort of say, you know, the subconscious part of your mind is what we're dealing with here. And it doesn't know the difference between reality and what you tell it. So let's be really mindful of that story and try and tell it how we want to be, how we want to show up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've got clients that, you know, we're trying to help them feel more financially abundant. And they say, yeah, but I'm not. So I can't do this affirmation because I'm not that right now. And I say, right, please just try it. Please believe that it's possible for you because then you're halfway there. I think sometimes though people find it so hard to connect with that sort of future version. And I say, okay, how about saying I am working my way to being financially abundant? Because it's kind of like closing that gap, isn't it? It's trying to help them recognize that it is possible even if they find it really hard to to do right now and then again there's other exercises we go into we look at vision boards and you know okay let's try and think about what success looks like for you what does that dream house or dream car look like what would you wear so we can try and like get them a little bit more tuned into you know that vision of themselves that they have but i think as with anything when you start doing this work it is scary and there is always some resistance i think that comes up mm -hmm. and even when you start progress then generally a bit more resistance comes up but oh I just I just try and say to my clients you know you've just got to give it a go throw everything at it something will work <laughs> in the midst of all of the things will work but obviously everybody's different so for some people tapping works for other people affirmations alone works and it's just trying to find that good fit for that person mm, I love that you said I'm working my way through this because a mindset phrase that is like nails on the chalkboard for me and I wonder if it's the same for you is the fake it till you make it kind of yeah. stuff I don't want to fake nothing like no. I want to be present I want to feel it I want to do it like that's what I thought of when you're like I'm working my way through it that's such a better flip that I'm faking it till I make it kind of thing because when you say fake it till you make it, it feels so inauthentic and ungenuine. Yes. And like, would you do that on social media and fake it till you make it? Probably not, because it would show up. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the same with your mindset. Mm -hmm. Just trying to work out that system that works for you and how you can try and recognize it is a growth and try and ensure that you are using a growth mindset rather mm -hmm. than a fixed one. And sometimes that little phrase of, you know, I'm working my way to this just helps it just connects those dots a little bit for somebody who might be struggling a little bit 
I love that. Now, another thing I hear, you talked about vision boards and, and I, and I do the same and, you know, goal setting. And what a lot of people I've heard say though, is I'm wondering how you combat this. They say, well, I set a goal, even if it's of my future self or future vision, and I don't reach it by that timeline then I'm a failure. Because if I say I want X by Y and Z, you know, by June 1st, and here we are June 1st, and I didn't, I didn't achieve what I set out to do, I suck. Do yeah. you set timelines? Because you need timelines yeah. to move, to, to stay accountable and move strategically. But how do you deal with people that go, well, I set a timeline and I didn't do it and now I suck? So I would encourage them to really pick it apart. So let's look at that goal. Was it actually achievable? Did you have the right things in place, such as the right mindset? Did you have support from somebody else? Were you showing up on social media enough? Or you know, did you have all of these things in place? And if you really were doing all of the things and you still didn't quite hit it, again, let's dig a bit deeper. Was it too much of a stretch? Were you actually aligned with that goal? Did you believe that that goal was possible? Because that's a massive one as well. And I think, you know, particularly when people go from being employed to setting up their own business and they say, you know, I want to earn this much. This is what I earned before. This is what I want to earn now. But they're starting from zero. So to suddenly just go from zero to whatever that looks like, that's a big jump in any business, in any industry. Yeah. So actually it's about trying to think, okay, let's break that goal down what does that look like in terms of sales or showing up or products or services? Do we need to do little incremental steps to that goal? You know, there's always a little something that's just out of line. But I think a lot of the time it's the self-belief. Again, you know, people have to truly believe that this goal is possible for them. If it's a big money goal, if it's a PR goal and they want to feature in Forbes or, you know, Entrepreneur Magazine, you know, are they connected and believing that it's possible? That is the biggest thing. It's that belief. You've got to believe it's possible. And when I'm doing my own goals, I'm like, I am this. I am a seven figure business owner. Like I'm it in my mind before it happens in reality. Yes. And um, I'm so connected to it. And it's, it's interesting how, you know, we were talking about the awareness and the belief. Something that came up for me, which is so kind of related, but unrelated was the so same for me. I'm like, I do so much mindset work. Like I'm good. Like I'm in a good place. Right. And I can remember when my husband and I, this was pre-COVID, we were like, we got to find a babysitter. Like we, we hadn't been on like date nights in so long and we couldn't find this. We couldn't find a reliable sitter. Like we'd have someone that would come like once or twice and then they would start canceling or then they would, oh, I found another job. And we were going through like all these sitters and I was like, oh my God, I guess we're just like never going to have a date night because we can't find a sitter. And then- <laughs> My friend was like, uh, do you believe that there is a qualified, amazing person who cannot wait to come to your home and is excited to look after Oliver while you guys go out and have this beautiful date night? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, oh my God, I totally caught myself. And I'm like in this negative, negative, like we're never going to get a date night. We can't find somebody reliable. And I did not even realize that I was not believing that there was a person, you know, that, that, that that was possible, that there would be a wonderful sitter out there available just for us, for all of yeah. us. It starts with the belief. So sometimes even when you think you got this, as you said, things come up other places that you're like, okay, I got some work to do around that, or I got to figure that out, right? Like it all starts, it all starts with the belief. I love that so much. Um, tell me a bit about equestrian and country brands. I do want to circle back to this. So you love horses, you live on a farm. Hello, that's like my dream life. Like, tell me a bit about like that. Just tell me about that. Okay, so yeah, I have my own horse. Um, my mum was horsey. She had a pony for me before I was even born. So I think it was non-negotiable as to whether I would be a horsey girl. Um, the degree that I did, I did a business degree. Um, I graduated in 2013 and I specialized in equestrian and agriculture because again, horsey girl my whole life. I love 
horses. I love the whole um, industry. And yeah, and I currently live on a farm in the Cotswolds in England. Um, and I'm so lucky to be able to combine my loves and you know what I know, I, you know, I know this inside out with a business. And I honestly just feel like, I mean, the universe must have my back, right? To just give me this in abundance. Um, yeah, and I just, you know, I think the equestrian industry is, is quite specific. You know, you need to know one end of the horse from the other mm -hmm. if you're going to be doing PR around a business. Um, you know, so I'm very fortunate to have that understanding, to have done my degree around that. And now to be, you know, supporting business owners in a similar industry is just, oh, I love it. Absolutely wow. love it. So you have, you have one horse. Yes. What's the horse's name? Ollie. Because when he was a baby, he was a Wally. He was Ollie the Wally. Oh my gosh, and my son's name Oliver. I have an Oliver child. You have an Oliver. You have a furry child, right? Or a, uh, yes. a weird pony child, right? <laughs> child. Oh my gosh. And what does your if horse look like? My horse, if my horse is naughty, I do say Oliver. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love he's it. Beautiful. He's very tall. Because um, I'm very tall as well, so I need a tall horse. He used to be a racehorse. And then he retired from racing because he had just, he'd, ra he'd raced for so many years. Yeah. And now he has a lovely life on the farm with me. Aww. And his best friends are cows. Oh, Yep. <laughs> so you've got other animals on the farm too. So you've got cows, yep. you've got a horse. Yep. yep. So my husband is a farmer um, and he raises Aberdeen Angus cows. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. Got called Reuben and Ollie and Reuben are good friends. Oh my God. I want to like be a fly on the wall at your farm. <laughs> and, and now do you ride Ollie or is he pure? Is he done all bit of that? Yes, I do. I stopped riding when COVID hit mm -hmm. just because I didn't want to risk putting myself in hospital. Yeah. Fingers crossed I wouldn't, but I just thought it's not, not worth the risk. So hopefully hoping to start again in a few weeks, but Mm. I view my morning ride as my quiet time. It's the time when I don't check my phone. I'm not on technology. You know, I've done my morning routine. I then go for a ride. And like you were saying, you know, you don't stop at work until that, you know, those things in the morning are done. And to me, that is that time when I'm just like, oh, getting ready for my day, preparing myself mentally. I've thought of some of the best PR campaign ideas when I'm riding. Oh I really God. have social media posts or topics for lives. I think it's just because I'm like in my happy, quiet place and my subconscious mind just kicks in. It's just like, here's an idea, here's an idea. Like, oh, I need to remember it. <laughs> yeah, so for the entrepreneurs or anybody listening, if you're not giving yourself that time to play, to be creative, you know, so many times I think too, that's a myth that we gotta work, work produce, 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 produce. You're like the best things come to me when I'm riding my horse. Like yeah. permission granted to move and do things differently than butt in the seat riding out stuff and producing. Now horses are very intelligent, yes? Yes. Do you find that Ollie, like, if your mindset isn't where it normally is, do you find that affects like when you're riding him or interacting with, like can he feel it? Does he know? Yeah, I think he can, to be honest. I remember I was riding him one day last summer and he was just very excited and was just being a bit naughty. But at the end of the lesson, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we had three minutes of really good work. And the rest of the lesson, he was just very naughty. Um, <laughs> but I had such a good mindset that I was able to focus on those good three minutes. So I think, you know, the mindset, yes, it's so imperative in business. It's also so imperative in your personal life, your relationships, sports, hobbies. It's just across the board. It's so important. Mm -hmm. So, so, so true. I love the tips you gave about if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. No is still a win. Follow your path. No, the universe got you. You say, I believed in myself enough. Believe in yourself. It all starts with belief. Have a plan for social media. Know why you're going on, know when you're getting off and what you're doing there. Getting through those mindset blocks, affirmations, tapping. It's not a movement. It's not a one size fit all. Be willing to try it and do something different. Don't be trying to fake it till you make it. 
you're working your way through it, unpack those timelines. If things didn't work out the time that you hit it, unpack that and really look at what were those wins and were you set up properly to succeed? Maybe you need a new strategy, a new plan, or just a little bit more time. And I love talking about Ollie. What's the cow's name again? Ollie and... The bull is called Reuben. Reuben. Yes. Ollie and Reuben. Young <laughs> man, and I love them. Oh my God. So, Tara, I have to have you back on again because this oh was just, like chock full of goodness. And I just love that you authentically showed up and just taught from your heart, told us all about you, how you've reached success, what's worked for you. And if people want to know more about you or follow you, how can they find you? Yeah, so I'm at Tara Panther PR on all social media. Instagram's my sort of favorite, it's my go-to. Um, so yeah, I would love to connect with you. And if anybody's listening and love this episode, please send me a DM because I would just love to hear like, what was your biggest takeaway? I would just love to connect. I just love connections. That is one of the best things of business, I think. Yes, I love it too. And I'll go back one more second because I just thought of something. I love how you said you created content as well around what people told you they wanted, needed. So take her up on the offer. If there's something that she said that really helped you or something that you're really struggling with, that's how us as creators come up with our next offering or our next piece of free content or our next podcast interview that we know what to talk about and what to teach you. So when creators like us say, tell us, tell us, please take her up on the offer and do that. Tara, you're so lovely. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for having me. It's such a privilege. Thank you so much. And listeners, thank you so much for being here. I know you're either in a time where you've got so much time on your hands, you don't know what to do with yourself. So you could have been getting lost in the rabbit hole somewhere else and you're here or vice versa. You're busier than all get out and you're making this time for yourself to learn and to grow. So no matter where you are in the journey, I want to honor you. I want to say thank you for being here, and I'll see you next time on The Lisa Pizik Show.